All right. Um, I'm going to be working out of the dynamic watercolor book. Um, I have taken a piece of white watercolor paper, B paper actually, and put, first I put the Deco Arts crackle glaze on and a fairly thin coat. And then I put the Distress Crackle paint on in a really thick coat and let that dry. Later on, I'm going to use some acrylics with some stencils. So I'm going to let that sit to the side. Everybody else should be in here in a little bit, I think. And some iridescent medium. Again, I'm going to do that in a little bit later. I'm going to use magicals. And I got a couple stencils for when I do use the acrylic. I'm not going to do a project straight from the book, but the book is Dynamic Watercolors. It's um, ten <clears throat> Texture Techniques from Jane Betteridge. I've tabbed several things for showing. Um, I'm working with Crackle Pace, and she had done a project where she did a beach scene with the crackle on the beach. So I'm going to do something similar to that. She used modeling paste in here um, just to give it more texture, but I'm going to use uh, saran wrap, I think, and some stencils, but I'm not positive. I'm not going to use straight up watercolor. I'm going to use a combination of ink tints and the magicals. So let me set this aside. I wanted to see the difference between the two crackle paste, which is why I put it in like two distinct areas. I can tell you the Ranger crackle paste is definitely cracked. Like some of it is even wanting to come off the page. I think that the distressed crackle paste is much finer. I didn't put it on very thick. I put it on with a brush. This I put on with a palette knife, which was kind of messy. So I think I'm going to just start with a little bit of ink tints color. Just to give a little bit of a color to it. I think I'm going to put some amber on there. And my ink tints blocks, I've just taken a palette that I got off of Amazon and I have broken them up because they were gifted to me and they were no longer in the tray. So that's why they're this way. And I think I'm going to get a little baked earth also. My brush wet. And I'm just going to float some on. Like I said, some of that is moving. Some of it cracked off the page. And this is the amber that I'm using right now. I do not see a lot of cracks in the Deco Art one. As much as I do the Ranger product. But again, I did not put them on in the same thickness.
I don't know where everybody is. And I went on just a little early, not that much. This is a live chat, so if you see it, we might be talking to people. I, I left the chat on the video so you can sort of see where the conversation goes. So definitely would say there is more crackle. Um, she got a much bigger crackle in her project. And let's see if it says what she was using. In the product description. It just says crackle paste. It said to completely cover the surface without being overtly thick. And you can see the, she got much larger size crackles than what I'm getting. But I think she used a more traditional crackle paste. All right, let's add some baked earth. Yeah, I don't really see. They're very small crackles. I don't even know if you'll be able to see them on the camera. Some of it broke up and is chipped off on here because it's very um, plastic-like. Let's put Magicals on next. And I'm gonna I'm using the same set. This is Glory of the Sea Gold and Opal Sea Gold. And I want to just get it in this area where the beach is. And this is Magicals, um, all from the same collection. I don't remember what the name of that collection is. I want to say it's something about, it's not the Nantucket. I'm working out of dynamic watercolors, and I'm doing a twist on this project with Crackle Paste. Don't have a whole lot of Crackle going on. And I'll show you the crackle paste I'm using for those of you just joining. Now, one of these colors has some darker shades in there, which I like.
just trying to chase some of that around. And evaporate some of that water. I think I'm gonna. I don't know where everybody else is, Dottie. I came on a little earlier than I said, but it's. And I figured the notification. I wonder if the notifications didn't work. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the color that has that dark. Put some on the tip of the brush. I'm trying to bring those crackles out a little more. So I'm just getting some out of the bottle from the tip of the brush. And then I'll hold it up so you can sort of see it. But it is breaking off in places. It is like chipping off the paper. So I don't know about that aspect. I don't think you can see the crackle very well. Hi, Jean. Hi, Christy. Hi, Kathy. So I will tell you, I used two forms of crackle. I brushed this on. I did not get very much crackle at all. So my experience with crackle has always been using paint where you had, oh, the camera's going. Let's give it something to focus on. All right. So my experience with paint has always been that you put paint on, then you put the crackle on, then you put more paint on, and it crackles. This did not do a lot of crackling. This crackled, but it is coming off the paper in places, which I don't really care. Um, I think she used a more traditional crackle. I think she used more of a modeling paste type crackle to get the big cracks that she got. And it's dynamic watercolors is what I'm using. Hi, CB. Hi, Vicki. So not super impressed with that. I'm going to add some dark chocolate. cover up here. It 
See, and it's still chipping off the paper in areas. And it's the ranger one that's chipping off the paper. All right, I'm going to put some of that. Gold back in. From the magicals. And these are all, all the magicals I'm using are from the same set. But I can't remember what set it is. It's, I'm going to say something shell. That the word shell is in the name. It's all has a, it's not the Nantucket Sea set. I know that. Okay, let's get that back in there so the camera doesn't go like a doodle. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take and put I think I want to do a layer of magicals before I do the washi. Hi, Dee. Hi, Beth. Well, it should have. It should have posted on. See, that's really weird. And I didn't do anything different. Hi, Eileen. So. To kind of recap what I've done, because I was all by my lonesome there for a little bit until Dottie joined me, is I'm doing dynamic watercolors and I'm working on my version of this. And I used the crackle paste. The crackle paste that I used were two. I used a very thin coat with a brush of the Deco Art Media line. And it has very fine crackle. Like, I don't even think you'll be able to see the crackle on the camera. Then I didn't feel like it was cracking, so I used a thicker coat of the clear rock candy, which is a distressed crackle paint. And it's coming off the paper. It's popping off the paper. So I don't know. I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to add blue magicals where my sky and my ocean are going to be. To start with. And I'm being fairly liberal with the blue. And that's called Azure Sea Asters. And it has kind of like a gold mica to it. And then I'm going to use a cement green down towards this bottom. And I'm going to keep that kind of down in this area at the bottom where the water will be. And let it mix.
with the Scott color. Okay, let's spray that. And I'm gonna tilt my paper a little bit because I really don't want, I'm gonna use my brush. I really don't want this on my beach per se. All right, I'll clean my brush and work on moving some of the blue. I'm really just wanting a base. There are pieces of that rock candy on the upper part of the page that are stuck to the paper. It's kind of weird. Okay. I'm going to let that green mix with that blue a little. All right, I'm going to turn the heat gun on and dry that. Let's put some, count some cloud light. All right, and then I'm going to take some saran wrap. This is still really wet in the middle. that sort of dry along the sky. We can work on a little. I'm just going to All right, I'm going to take some ugly washi. And tuck some washi right in here. So that we'll end up with sort of a straight line while we're working on the water in a little bit. know why my chat is not moving down. Hi Janet.
So we'll let that dry there. I, I finally started, I didn't finish. I start, finally started to watch the Tim Holtz. Hi, Pam. Well, gosh, hopefully you're going to start feeling better. You're on your recovery. Welcome. I finally started to watch uh, the Tim Holtz video on the distressed oxide sprays. I did not get very far in it and it was time to stream. So I put it on my watch later. While we're waiting for that to kind of set up and dry, I'll give you a little flip through of this book. Some of the things that I really liked about it. It's a watercolor book, but I think it would apply to mixed media and could be used with um, other mediums besides watercolor. So she talks about um, doing a watercolor on a map, which we need to do that soon. I need to do that because you just take clear gesso is all you need to do. Um, I just use a Liquitex brand of clear gesso. There are some other brands and you're just going to coat the map. In fact, you know what, why that's drying? Why don't we prep a piece of map paper? I'm not sure there's no magical color. I don't know what we're going to put on said watercolor map. But I'm going to just take a piece of an atlas. And I'm going to try to get a coastal area. This has Maine. Oh, wait, maybe Maryland. That has uh, Maryland. So this will be kind of like an intermission. And let's make it 12. I'm going to cut off the cities on the bottom to start with. And then I'm going to cut off some of this top. All right, then we need, I'm going to trim. I don't like, I just really want the coast. Take this off right here, and then we'll make it nine. We'll trim off some of this red. And that'll give me a piece that's like 9 by 12, which is typically a size that I work with. I'm trying to keep this in camera so that we can, the camera doesn't go crazy. Hi, Rod. So I'm going to put clear gesso. Now I would say for this project, like that I, you wouldn't do a whole lot of water. I mean, like this paper is not going to take the abuse that a piece of watercolor paper would take.
this will give it kind of almost a sandy texture. that allows you to the watercolor to grab. It just gives some tooth to the paper. It's really thin paper. You could use a map piece, like the maps that you fold and leave in your car. I get a lot of maps. Well, there's a couple of ways, places I've gotten them. Most of my atlases I've gotten by friends asking people at church if they had any um, music books or map books that they wanted to throw out or get rid of. And they go and get them for me. Great friends. Um, the other place is I go to the half price bookstore and find maps occasionally. So I would let that dry. And then my thought is I might have a pattern in here for a crab that I'd already done. I think that's what I would watercolor on there is a crab. There's my crab that I used before and some graphite. Just a second. I'm going to be right back. Bob, I'm going to adjust this heat a little bit because it is water. Yeah. Because the door's shut. Okay, that is pretty dry. I'm gonna give it just a little dry. Hi, button. All right, and I'm gonna use, this is just graph, graphite and mine is well used, well loved, but it helps it not be too dark. So, and then I'm just going to put our little fran down and take a pencil and do a light trace just to get my basic. shape um, I would say that this is something you can also do like on a magnetic board to help hold it this down and this is from dynamic watercolor the idea
that you would watercolor on a unique paper using clear gesso. And I wouldn't say that her ideas in her book are 100% or like new or you've never heard of them. But sometimes we need that reminder. And it's nice to have them in one place. That's why I tapped my book out with post-its is I it's just to help me remember the things that I saw that I tend to forget or didn't know. I'm kind of wondering about how the crackle paste would do on an acrylic pour. And maybe the traditional one that, you know, heavier that you use. Okay, and I'm getting a very faint drawing because this was a little bit wet. But it gives, it's very, very light, but I can go in when this is drier and flesh out. And just go, you don't even have to use the graphite uh, paper. If you need it to, you could just use the pencil. I need a different pencil. It's not showing up very well on here. I'm rushing it. I should have weighed it. So I, then I could go in and watercolor that. So, hi, Linda. Hi, Colleen. So the idea is that you put the clear gesso on the paper, let it dry, let yours dry thoroughly, then use the graphite in your pattern or draw what you want to draw, and then you would come back in and lay in your watercolor. So when this is a little more dry, I'll go in and hit that again and match it up better. Let's also, I think, with some of the magicals to make one of my colors. So I'm taking this blue and I'll add that into that iridescent. And just mix it. Yeah, you can see. Just making sure. Um, one of the reasons I prefer the magicals over the sprays is you have more options of what medium to add the pigment to. All right, so we'll let that sit and use that just a little bit. And what I'm going to use for my stencil is a tree stencil. And I'm going to keep turning it. And I'm going to use the blue black. And these have wonderful shimmer. They are acrylic. Hi, cat. 
And then I'm use the blue green. They're the Dyna colors. And the green blue. The first color is the color of the paint and the second color is the color of the mica. And then also the gold green. That, and I'm going to use a sponge. I'm going to start with the dark color. And I'm going to use the same sponge and move it back and forth between the different colors. And I'm going to pick up the stencil. I think I want to put a piece of paper on that bottom just to help me not go there. So I'm just going to roughly cut my bead shape and I can move that around. I think I want to go more sideways with this. All right, so I'm going to go back to the blue black. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors and go through that stencil. And I'm going to come back a second pass. I'm not really worried about like hitting every spot. Or if I overlap. I might shift to a different area. To get a different pattern. Going in. A different area. the rest of that blue black and some blue and I'm gonna shift the stencil the magicals I mixed with Liquitex basics iridescent medium which I like. It makes like a thin modeling paste. All right, now I'm going to come back a second pass and I'm going to use that lighter color. The green. sort of see the texture we're getting and now I'm going to come in with the modeling paste 
or iridescent to pick some up and just go through some of the areas. And add a top layer. Make some more of that if I need to. And this time I think I'll even put some of that green in there. These all have a gold. This set all has kind of a gold mica to it. Actually, going to leave that for some uh, the next step. I think I'm going to go with the back with the blue. So I'm going to leave that for just a minute and go more with the traditional blue because I just had a thought. And I just take some of the powder. I spilled some. and mix it in. You can do this with uh, glazing medium, gel medium, water to make a spray. They are permanent when dry. Now, unlike modeling paste, this will not be that thick. It'll be a fairly thin coat that you get. And I added a little of that paint to that one. Okay, that I need to wash. I don't typically wash my stencils, but that I need to wash. Okay. I need to get a little bit more right here. So I'm going to just take some of the paint and a little of that green. I'm just picking some of the paint up off the gel plate. Just to make sure I got in this area. Okay. So that's our water. And I think I'm going to take a white acrylic and add some water to that, get it kind of milky. And I'm just going to add when well, this is wet. Like I said, this is not her tutorial. So this is my kind of interpretation of her piece. And that rock candy is peeling off. But I do like the white on the crackle.
but you're not going to find this exact tutorial in the book for her. So. I rarely do straight up the tutorial in the book, to be honest. All right, and then I think I'm going to take, I like that white on the crackle. It shows up a little more with that white paint. So I'm just going to continue kind of bringing that water. And I'm going to make it a little heavier white in some places where it would meet. And this is. Deco Arts Tradition, opaque white, which is a really nice white to work with. All right, and then I'm going to come to the back of the water, I think, and add a little of this blue in. And I'm just going to go across where that washi tape is. Get a little heavier at the top. And I'm going to take a clean, wet brush and try to feather that out and let some of that, let gravity help me here in a minute. I'm picking up some more of that turquoise paint that's left at Dinah. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little bit of that blue black back out. And add some of that. Um, no, I take that back. I don't like that. Back there, it went gray. I'm going to get more of the blue. Then I need to get to the next step or my stuff is going to dry out on me. Okay, so I need to take this off. I'm going to hit, minimize that white. A couple places I lost the white, but I can put it back in with the Posca.
Why add that turquoise back in over here? Thank you, Christy. All right. So the next stencil, I need to dry this just a little bit, but I really don't want to dry my. Let me heat gun this just real quick in this one area. I'm going to get my nut second stencil. This is also a crafter's workshop stencil. All right, and we're going to set that there. We're going to add I think I want to put a little piece of tape so my stencil doesn't move so much. I'm going to add some brown paint to my palette. All right, so I'm just going to add this to the top. I don't want to add it down there. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is use some of this light green and get some of that there. I'm even going to use some of this dark blue, black. Get a kind of a dark color going over. This is not your top layer. All right, then I'm gonna add my brown paint. I have two colors. A uh, raw sienna and a burnt sienna that I pulled. I'll use a different sponge. And I'm going to come in with the. And I'll actually tell you that I probably can tell now I could use the opaque white first and then come back. So I'm going to hit that with the opaque white in some areas. And now come back with the the browns. All right. Now I'm gonna take my iridescent green paste that I made. I'm going to add it through the stencil. I'm not really worried about everywhere. I had some white paint that I had. I'm going to spray this just to get, if I can get some more of the color off there. I'm going to add a little more of that iridescent medium. This will be a lighter value. 
in some areas. Brown paint, hit some of that dark. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Let's take that, peel it back. All right. That needs to dry. Let's take the white. I'm going to leave that. That's still attached because I might need to bring that back in and add some darker green to it again. I'm thinking that I'll get a green out that's darker. Let's go in with the white Posca. I'm going to add a little more. Okay. That was not. Whatever that paint touched last was red or pink. Because that one came out pink. added a little light to the horizon line. Um, we can take some of that white and I'm gonna give it again yeah, I'm gonna give it a little water. And I'm gonna take a damp Paper towel. I'm gonna get this a little wet too. I really want a soft dusting of clouds, not. Get that wet again. Take a different area of the paper towel and just kind of Soften, maybe even twist a little. It's kind of a faint cloud. All right, let's dry this with a heat gun real quick. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Kathy. Berg.
All right, so night, Mary. Hi, Holly. Sorry, I didn't see you, Mary. See, it happens to all of us. All right, so I'm going to get a little darker green. This is uh, Artist Law Metallic uh, Phthalo Green. And then I think I'm going to even go to a darker green as well. These are pine green. I think I'll go sap. This is not metallic, so I'll probably put the sap on first. So I just have some paint on the jelly plate. I'm going to move this back down. That's where taping that as a hinge can help me. All right, let's use this first. And then let's put some of the metallic. Next. Okay. Over the ocean is where the colors were too similar. Some more sap green to that metallic. I think I'm even going to come in with a little bit of a stencil brush and a couple areas I don't think I'm getting paint. This does have a lot of little holes. To the green. that's better. You can see it's a tree. All right, and then I'm going to take my wet brush. 
um, I actually think I want, this can come off the back. Again, that needs to be washed. And not set together. That was my mistake last time is I put the two wet trees stencils together and whew, I didn't think I was ever going to get them apart. All right, let's find this is burnt umber. Okay. Put some burnt umber on the tree in there. And the branches. Sort of blot some of that back. And then I'm going to add some white. To this one side. Clean that brush a little and sort of soften that edge, just to kind of give that tree a little. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm just using the end of a baby wipe, so I don't have the whole baby wipe in my hand. And then come back with the burnt umber. There's still some white on my brush. I think I want to add some water to that burnt umber and let it go in some of these chipped areas where the water, I mean, that is just coming off. When they said rock candy, they meant, yeah, it's going to chip off like candy. Some of the white back in there. trying to make a like there's a hill that the tree is sort of sitting on and then I think I want to bring the water farther in here like this is a lower elevation A 
blow that blue back. Hi, AJ. So right now I'm just sort of kind of creating like a tide pool area. Like the water's kind of crashing in. on that sand. That's all crackle stuff that's fallen off. So I don't know. It might not be meant for paper because it says something about a canvas. So maybe the fact that I'm using it on paper and it's flexible Throw those in the water. All right. Let me. All right. I'm going to say this one's done pretty much. I'm getting up. I want to get some water on those stencils. I'm going to spray them. I'm going to have them sit between some damp paper towels. So I could take them to the sink here in a little bit. But that way they'll kind of stay wet until I'm ready to go clean them. So I just made a sandwich. And I'll just let that paint dry on there. And I'll use it the next time I jelly print. So that's where I ended up with tonight. Um, disappointed in the crackle. As aspect of it. Um, I don't know if I would buy this. Unless you're going to use it on something rigid like a canvas. Like I said, if you were using it on a canvas, then it wouldn't move. But every time I kind of move this, some of it wants to pop off. Maybe if I brushed it on and done a couple different layers, or I don't know. The other one I brushed on hardly crackled. There are some very fine crackles. So I can't say I've had a whole lot of luck with the crackle mediums. They often are difficult to use. So I was not really wowed by either of these. So I might, but I really like that look of the eggshells. So what I probably will do is
try this on a canvas board because it does say, well, it says use on cardstock, chipboard, paper mache, and much more. Dries to a porcelain style crackle. It says to apply with a brush. I did use a palette knife to kind of make it thicker. This one I applied with the brush. Heavy a coat with blur. The more heavy, the bigger the. It self levels, so don't brush over it. The size of the cracks will be based on the thickness of the layer. So this is really tiny cracks that I got. So I may go back and try more of a traditional like um, folk art craft crackle paint and try to see if I can't get bigger. You can see the crackle a little. It's really hard. It had some good crackle here, but you can see where it chipped off. Right in here is where it chipped off. And it looks like rock candy. Now I could maybe wait till this is dry and add another layer of crackle. The Deco Arts crackle is not coming off but it's really tiny. So the book that I was working from was Dynamic Watercolors. And here was her piece. And she did not use any acrylic. She did use inks. Um, she used inks, acrylic inks. Yeah, I think that's, I want a, probably a more traditional, but what I wanted was the crackles that look like eggshells. I didn't really want weathered wood. I wanted crackles that look like eggshells. And these are so, that's the kind of crackles I got, but they're very tiny. Very, very tiny. And like I said, the Tim Holtz is falling off the paper. So I may dry it and then put a layer of the rock candy on brushed on. Yep, I have a crackle stencil and that may just be, that's why I didn't have any crackle stuff. Because it never works the way you want. This was a thick layer dot. It's coming off the paper. It's just like clear pieces. If I touch it or brush my hand along it, I can pop pieces off. This was thick. Hi Faith, by the way. Don't count your crackle. Yeah. Crackle is a uh, you know, we don't know how many times she did that before she got those crackles. Before they took the picture. I have that stencil. I have the crackle stencil. But I need a crackled egg, egg stencil. That stencil doesn't, um, in reality...
That stencil doesn't look like cracked egg either. That doesn't look like cracked egg. Somebody needs to make one that looks like egg layers. Um, I think it was, I don't know if the rock candy is meant to be a last layer. I'm wondering if this is supposed to be a final layer. Because it is a high gloss. You see it says a nostalgic clear crackled finish over artwork. So maybe they don't intend you to put anything on top. Maybe this is like do your painting and then add that. So let's try something. Well, I don't have anything. I take that back. And what did I do with our friend the crab? He's dry enough now we can. So this was the map paper. I didn't get a very good um, image because it was too damp. But I can come back. And add. more lines to help me. The graphite stuck to the. This was the other idea in the book that I really liked. I think I'm going to have a problem with this one. I've got too many lines because it was too wet. You guys probably can't see, but I've got too many lines in here. Yeah, I went far from the book. So let's see. Let's take. Let's see if we can. Let's try to get it outline of him.
You know what I'm going to use instead of a pencil? Is I'm going to use the eight tenths pencil. So let's get an eraser. I don't know why erasers are always so hard to find. And they need a home. happens is I give them a home and then they get moved. <clears throat> there they are. Let's see if I can't lighten it. Some. Down here is where I messed up. Okay, let's take. I wish this tray, my one complaint about this tray is it's flimsy. So when you go to lift the one out of the other, you're lucky if you don't knock them all askew. All right, so I'm going to take bark. the main body. And I didn't plan this out very well. Like I was rushing. It's very obvious that it would be better to uh, put your clear gesso and let it really dry. But you get the idea of what you could do. And then I would probably come in here 
with a lighter color. And add some Can you hear Ding Dong Tay Tay? In fact, these I might even do in a gray. Would be better possibly. She's hunting. She is fine. This is every night. She wants for nothing. But I think that's how I would do it is take the time and let it dry. Then I, I like the idea of doing this project with the ink tints. And sketching it out. And then coming back in with your colors. That you need and adding your details. And I'm just sort of activating those lines. And then blotting. In fact, I could clean my brush and I'd have less. You could use a blue. I mean, you could use whatever color. Yeah, uh, that's what Siamese do. Thank God we didn't get two of them. Okay, and this. Is this other claw? Now there is an outlining pencil also that you could use that's in this set for the pencil that's not in the block. This is the, the brown. More willow color. These are permanent when dry. And there's actually some other like plates and details that you could add. I think that working on the 
matte paper is a good project for the ink tints because you can draw it out without doing a lot of damage to the paper. I'm just trying to recover kind of what I, I messed up. But you get the idea. And then you could just keep working in. And then I could I could switch to the blocks to add in layers. Now that the drawing is fleshed in. I have too many things sitting around me. Once again, not enough room. So I can add some more. Just using the ink tense blocks, I can get to a larger area. It's not buckling too bad, but I'm not adding that much water. Okay, this is supposed to this is supposed to go over this leg.
pull some dark lines back. And then, oh, I dip my pencil instead of my brush. And then I'm gonna hit more with a rusty red in here. In some areas. It does help to have the palette, the key to the palette sitting by you. I actually would need both of these boxes to finish because you need, I'm needing a tangerine. So you get the idea. I said I'm not going to finish him tonight. I'm not sure I'll finish him at all. We'll see. He's at least drawn out if I do decide to finish him. I mean, he's got some bright blue in there that I don't have in there yet. You could add. So I would just keep working and adding color, drawing and adding another layer. You can't add too much water on this paper at one time. You could use the Primas also or any watercolors you had. I just would go light on the water. you get the idea. My biggest mistake was I tried to trace it too soon. And it stuck. But that's pretty much it for me. So the book, for those of you who came in late, is Dynamic Watercolors by Jane Betteridge.
And I worked on two ideas from the book. Crackle paste and adding some texture. Uh, my saran wrap, you couldn't see it because it wasn't a distinction. And then this was watercolor on matte paper. And you use clear gesso to do that. Yeah, it's a good book. I think it's a she has nice projects in it, but I think it's also just a great uh book of more abstract ideas. Some of her ideas really lend themselves to negative painting, some of her things that she does. So I think you will like it. Her style tends to be um, abstract. Sometimes it's doing a background and then adding details. She also has a different book called Watercolored Unleashed, which I think you would also like, Shauna. I think it has more of the negative painting type techniques in it. I will probably get the second book. I will probably get a used copy, which I often do on Amazon. I have not been disappointed. So this buckled a little. I don't know if it would be my, I like the idea, but it is buckled a little. I do too, Kathy. I have never had any problems with if it says use like new or use good shape. I have not had any problems. My ink book that I bought that you showed us, I bought that used. Looking for the case for the jelly plate. Where would you be? Okay. So tomorrow we have Dee Janet Jean, right? It is a holiday tomorrow in the U.S. So some people are off work. Yeah, if it was really old, that it could be musty. I've not had that problem. So I'm wondering if I shouldn't paint more of that crackle on top of where it fell off. Real quick. I think I'm going to. I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to brush on a layer. across the beach area again. But this time, instead of using a palette knife, I'll brush it on. And see if that doesn't help. 
keep it from falling off. And then I'll let that dry and we'll we'll look at it later. So I just used it as a top coat. And we'll let it dry and then we'll You can see my uh, Lindy's here and here. I think the Lindy's on the beach. Some of it is lost, but not all. And that probably doesn't show up on the camera, but there's a gold shimmer to it. You can sort of see it on the camera. Um, we can see she answers to her own me. Her, she's her own boss. We just think we own the cat. Tay Tay. Huh? Oh, they want to see her. They want kitty time. Let's see if she'll come. I don't know if she's yet. I don't know if she's yet. Your fans, I can't help it. Oh, now. She's not going to stay. She was in there. She's not going to stay. She was in there with Bob. That was it. She's going to call CPS. Come here. Maybe. Maybe. She came back. Gonna call the CPS, the Cat Protective Service. Mommy, pick me up. She was watching football. Yeah, Sam was watching football with the other cats and dad. Because mom was in here. You going to roll over? You going to roll over and show them you're cute? I'm gonna move that stuff. You're gonna roll over and show them your 